Hey everyone, Dr. Larson here. Welcome to the video. This will be part two. I'm doing a three-part series on this. The ileocecal valve syndrome, ICV. This one's on causes. I have one on symptoms as well, and I'm making one on prevention and kind of treatment uh, techniques and things as, as, as well. So the first thing, because you may or may not have watched the other one on the syndrome, I want to tell you what this is, okay? It's at the end of the small intestine and the beginning of the large intestine. The end of the small intestine is called the ileum, and the beginning of the large intestine is called the cecum. So ileocecal valve, there's a valve type structure there. So that is basically what we're looking at. Where it's located is you find your belly button, you find the corner of your hip bone over here, and you draw a line. Right in the middle of that is basically where that valve is, right where the appendix is. And what it does is it controls movement, controls food and other waste products as they move through from the small to the large intestine. You don't want that too quick, you don't want it too slow, you want it just right. So between the small and large intestines, it controls the movement. Now it can either get stuck open or stuck closed, which is spastic, and obviously there will be all kinds of different symptoms um, with that. But this video is about causes. These are in no particular order, okay? I've got them numbered, but they're in no particular order. Number one here is alcohol. Alcohol can irritate that valve. Uh, number two, caffeine can irritate that valve because it irritates the nervous system and that valve is controlled by your nervous system. Uh, number three, chocolate, same thing. It can have an irritating effect on it. So just keep in mind that different people are, are different, right? And some people will react and have problems with different things than others. These are, these are just things to keep in mind um, as you try to figure yourself out. Number uh, three, carbonated, there's two threes. Uh, number three, carbonated beverages as well. These can cause irritation. Uh, number four, overeating. Overeating can do it as well if you're just stuffing too much food in there. Uh, number five, eating too frequently. So not giving your GI system a, a, a rest. And you know, several years back, the whole rage was six small meals a day, be constantly eating. And it really, it's not really a natural way of living life. Um, you don't see animals and, and things eating constantly throughout the day. You see them fasting for longer periods throughout the night. That's why it's called breakfast. You're breaking the fast. Um, many cultures, you know, have one meal a day. So eating too frequently is going to constantly irritate that valve. Uh, number six, not chewing your food well. Things aren't being digested. Uh, Number seven, an irritated appendix, because the cecum is, it's the, the appendix is right there in the cecum, okay, right at the start of the large intestine. So if that appendix is getting irritated, now why does appendix get irritated? Well, all the things that we're explaining already, so the alcohol, the chocolate, the caffeine, the carbonated beverages, all these things irritate the appendix as well. Uh, number eight, spicy, greasy, or refined food. These irritate the ileocecal valve, irritate the appendix as well. And again, there's people that can be just fine with spicy food. It's not saying that the spicy food is a problem per se, but in different people, different bodies react differently. Re refined food, greasy, kind of always a problem. Uh, nine, not enough exercise. You have to have movement. You have to have motion to your body. And it keeps not just your muscles, it keeps your lymph system moving, your lungs pump, you know, uh, breathing in and out your heart, your circulatory system moving, and it keeps your digestive system moving. That's part of the benefit of exercise, is keeping your body in motion. Uh, number 10, lack of water. Again, you have to have water um, to run the machinery of the body. 11, spinal misalignment. This is one that a lot of people don't think of. I'm a chiropractor. Um, why, why I make all these videos on different organs is because if I don't help someone discover these problems, their body doesn't hold together very well. So I can be constantly trying to adjust someone for um, a spinal misalignment somewhere or a cranial imbalance, but if the rest of their life, the rest of their body is breaking down because of lack of nutrition, too much uh, toxic compounds that they're exposed to, their liver is struggling, whatever, I'm going to be adjusting them over and over and over again for the same things all the time. And that's basically why I make these videos. So the upper lumbar, uh, in particular, that's what those nerves is called innervation. Those nerves innervate the ileocecal valve, or at least that's part of the innervation to that valve. Uh, number 12, intestinal dysbiosis. Bacteria, parasites, viruses, funguses, 
things like that, this overgrowth that occurs. Um, I'm constantly helping people to use different herbs and things to help their body, support their body in removing this garbage out of their body, in, in, in their intestines for sure. Uh, in a spastic valve, magnesium deficiency, magnesium relaxes, okay? So calcium is more of like a, like, a, like a toner, a tonify. Magnesium is more relaxation. A lot of people have magnesium deficiencies. A lot of the reason why some people crave chocolate that I said like in number two or three um, is because they're craving magnesium. Their body is wanting to try to find magnesium. So magnesium deficiency is one. Uh, 14, psoas imbalance. This is the hip flexor muscle. So what it flexes your hip up. The, ili the iliacus, the psoas, there's a few different muscles that do it. The psoas is one of them. If there's a psoas imbalance, that one can tend to cause irritation at the ileocecal valve as well because it crosses right by it. Uh, 15, I think this is the last one, incorrect pH. A lot of people have an incorrect pH. Now, I'm not talking body pH. I'm talking in the digestive tract here. So your stomach has to be very, very acidic. I have, a, I think, a few videos on the stomach. Watch those because that is where everything starts as far as the, the uh, pH and the acidity of your GI tract. Your stomach has to be acid, your small intestine more alkaline, and then large intestine back to acid. Well, if people are taking antacids all the time, if they're stressed all the time, if um, you know, they're eating poor food all the time, it, it wears out that process and you, your stomach can't make and it doesn't properly make the right amount of hydrochloric acid. Now you get this whole reversal thing um, going on. So you have too alkaline of a stomach, too acid of a small intestine, and too alkaline of a large intestine. That's just a recipe for disaster. So we have to have the correct pH here. A lot of people, I get them to start uh, consuming the right kind of salt or um, certain hydrochloric acid uh, capsules. I talk about that more on my website. There's a certain company that I like the best out of that. Um, but correct pH is really, really important. If you want to learn more, uh, drlarson.com, I have more videos. Again, this was on the causes of ICV. I have one on syndromes or the uh, symptoms, and I'll have one on prevention and treatment as well. And I might just make one whole big combined one uh, just to make a longer video um, too. But this is a very, very important topic. It mimics a lot of things. It mimics a lot of symptoms. Go watch that video, and uh, I'll see you again soon.